Last night when Israel was attacked by Iran, it really shocked me because they were sending in drones and missiles and, you know, rockets and in all the locations all over Israel. But I don't know if you were aware of the fact that some of these drones and rockets and stuff went right over the Dome of the Rock, right over the Temple Mount, which is God's holy Mount Moriah, with no respect for the King of Kings and Lord of Lords who owns the holy mountain. And this enemy of God who doesn't respect God has the audacity to send drones right over the mountain where God said that his name would be forever. I have some screenshots of the drones going over the Temple Mount, over the Dome of the Rock specifically, and here are those pictures. And the caption on this picture said, Israeli defense systems intercept Iranian missiles over the Temple Mount. The thing that astounded me about Iran using drones directly from ancient Persia coming in directly from Iran and some of these other nations with them is that I posted this video revealing the drones on July 17th, 2022 when God showed me that this was coming and was now happening last night and my video was called prophetic news revealing Ezekiel 38 military drone swarms of Iran Persia and I have I'm gonna post the link to the video down below but last night they had these swarms of drones that came in and this was the thumbnail picture I had put on my video of July 17th, 2022, and I said this is a huge wow. In this video, I showed you what the Lord has been revealing about Iran selling Russia military drones, and then there was more to the description than that. And so it was in that video that I had said that the Lord was showing me in that scripture that when it says that the enemy will come in and cover the sky like a cloud, it suddenly dawned on me that those were drones. And I talked about how it's kind of like the bird murmurations that you know, they swirl around in these flocks and they can synchronize their flight pattern. And I said that this was coming and it was going to be like the waves of the World War II airplanes that came in in stages. And that's exactly what was happening last night. So I didn't know if you knew that it actually flew over Holy Mount Moriah where the Dome of the Rock is, but those are the pictures right there when these things flew over it. And never in the history of the world has anybody been brazen enough to send missiles over the Temple Mount or drones over God's Holy Mountain. You know, that's the place where Jesus was uh, crucified died, was buried, and resurrected in that place. And so there's a lot of, you know, very important holy sites right there, including, you know, the Mount of Olives just being just across from the Temple Mount area. 
that are very precious to the rest of the believers in the world. And it's really uh, speaking volumes about how these people disrespect God for sending weapons over God's holy mountain where he said his name would be forever. So needless to say, the Holy Spirit was showing me that when they came in like waves covering the land like a cloud, that this would be drones from Iran, specifically Persia, who was selling the drones to Russia. And this was just happening last night with the drones coming in. So I was totally astonished and I went back to find when I had made that video and it was July 17th of 2022. So I wanted to share what I had said in that video with you. Hopefully I can get this combined with this video so you can see what I said. And it's absolutely stunning because it was the Holy Spirit of God revealing that this was going to happen this way. Hey, the Lord was putting something on my heart this morning and showing me something that I wanted to share with you regarding Ezekiel 38 and an interpretation that is very fascinating. And this concerns the fact that our military leaders are saying that Iran is selling drones that are armed to Russia. And there are what they call aircraft carriers for drones and submarines that Iran has just displayed this past week where they can launch the drones off the aircraft carrier. And it's not as elaborate as our aircraft carriers. In fact, nothing like the quality of our aircraft carriers. But this is more like, you know, um, just a ship. And they seem to be mounted on launchers where they can launch them right off the sides of the ship and out of the submarines when they come out of the water they have the capability to shoot the drones into the sky as well. The White House says that Iran is to deliver armed drones to Russia. MilitaryTimes.com reports Iran has these aircraft carriers that carry drones that are armed for warfare and also the drones come up out of the submarines. This is the drone that was shot off of the aircraft carrier that belongs to Iran, ancient Persia. When we talk about multiple drones that are in formation, we're talking about something called a drone swarm. And it's very similar to what you saw in World War II where the airplanes were flying in formation with multiple planes, but they'd be one right after another after another till the sky was covered with these aircraft. This one says, meet the U.S. Army's new drone swarms from mindmatters.com. AI. The idea of a drone swarm is really kind of taken from if you've ever seen the starlings when they do the murmurations is what they're called and these are swarms of starlings thousands upon thousands of birds and they have these murmurations where they they go in a formation and they pivot like they form a cloud actually and the cloud shape shifts into different patterns and it's such an awesome sight and let me just show you a little clip of that from Tech Insider just a couple of little frames so you can see that That's all the starlings flying in a cloud. So when they're trying to develop this drone technology, this is the type of thing in a much less elaborate way, but this is kind of an example of how they militarily want to use drones in a swarm 
to be able to do these major military missions. So we all know that in Ezekiel 38, Persia is the first country listed, which is modern day Iran, and they are the ones that are selling the drones, according to the White House, to Russia. And we all know about Gog and Magog and the invasion that's going to come into the land of Israel. And I truly believe that the words of Ezekiel, when it says that they will come and cover the land like a cloud, and I'll just state that here, but I will come back to it and reiterate it at the end. Well, let's look at that scripture in Ezekiel 38 regarding this. This is from the Jewish Tanakh. And thou shalt come up against my people Israel as a cloud to cover the land. It shall be in the end of days, and I will bring thee against my land, that the nations may know me when I shall be sanctified through thee, O Gog, before their eyes. This enemy is coming as a cloud to cover the land. Iran is the one selling the military drones to Russia. Thou shalt ascend and come like a storm. Thou shalt be like a cloud to cover the land, thou and all thy bands and many peoples with thee. And when it says thou shalt ascend and come like a storm, the word ascend, there's several definitions of the word ascend. And the last one listed there is rise through the air, like a drone. This is from Popular Science, popsci.com. Army is testing out wolf packs of swarming drones. A recent exercise highlights the way that swarms of drones can help soldiers with tasks like scouting, post-battle assessment, and more. And this was published June 1st, 2022 by Kelsey D. Atherton. In the desert of Utah's Dugway Proving Ground, the Army trained for the future of war under the watchful eyes of a drone wolf pack. The experimental demonstration gateway exercise, Edge 22, ran from April 25th through May 13th, and the task at its center was figuring out how soldiers will work and fight alongside a swarm. A drone swarm is almost like a desegregated airplane. By putting sensors and weapons on many separate little aircraft, each with their own wings and engines and directions, the military can still scout and attack from the sky while having the built-in redundancy that comes from a multitude of drones. The exercise featured four swarms of up to seven drones each. So they're flying in a formation, like I said. Being able to guide that many drones with a single human operator is a major step towards making drone swarms viable as a tool of war. Every soldier piloting a drone is a soldier less capable of immediately responding to threats nearby and controlling drones as a swarm allows one swarm director to do the work that would have previously taken seven remote pilots. This is all what the Army referred to as the Wolf Pack. Meanwhile, it discusses the various abilities of the drones using the jargon of air-launched effects. At Edge 22, soldiers with the 82nd Airborne launched the swarms in four waves. That's what you had in World War II was the waves of multiple planes in formation that I was talking about. First a scouting wave, then a second scouting wave designed to overwhelm the enemy ability to track and detect, followed by a third wave with weapons or drones that could direct artillery and missiles, and a fourth wave that did post-battle assessment, a kind of scouting in reverse. The exercise featured people from across the Department of Defense, included soldiers from Canada, Italy, and Germany, and was watched by observers from three additional European countries and Australia. Edge 22 marked the largest ALE swarm to date, maxing out at seven in one swarm, with only one pilot on the ground needed to execute the swarm's tasks, said the Army in a release. That layered capability will provide commanders real-time decision-making while keeping soldiers out of harm's way, allowing for a situation to develop until ground forces are absolutely needed. 
The drones were launched from airborne helicopters and rack mounted on trucks. The, a swarm can be put into the sky from vehicles on the ground, lets the Army operate with overhead scouting even if it has no friendly aircraft flying nearby. By also deploying drones from helicopters, it showed that swarms can cover not just an extra scouting in advance of an aerial attack, but that the swarms themselves can fly out and catch early anti-aircraft fire, exhausting stockpiles of missiles before the crewed aircraft can get close. The specific drones used in the swarm were a certain type, which I won't mention, a tube launch drone that works with modular payloads. This allows the drones to be outfitted with specific sensors for a given mission, jammers, to counter other drones, or even explosive payloads so the drone can be turned into a switchblade-like weapon. Drones are by no means just a U.S. tool. Irregular and insurgent forces have adapted drones for flurry attacks in the past using multiple UAVs to overwhelm anti-air defenses. In Syria in 2018, insurgents launched drones, struck a Russian air base. It's a kind of threat that existing anti-air weapons at the time could mitigate, but only at the cost of expensive missiles. Ongoing war in Ukraine has seen drones used for combat with many scouting drones guiding artillery on both sides and with loitering munitions like the U.S. supplied switchblade drone featuring direct attacks. Countering drones depends on what equipment the attack forces have on hand from hoping the drone is low enough for a rifle to shoot it or, if so equipped, using a focused antenna jammer to disable the vehicle in the sky. Swarms by nature composed of multiple aircraft make drones a threat that's even harder to manage. Even if the swarm is just several drones scouting, the data sharing between drones and human operators could let one scout provide the exact coordinates to target for an entire battery of artillery. What we are seeing with drones is that they're extending our reach even further. We've got to make sure our concepts align with technology and make sure that since our drones can go that far, we can communicate that far. Can we sense that far? Can we operate in a tough neighborhood that far, said Major General Walter Wally Rugen in a release. Now, the MilitaryTimes.com reported this week that the White House on Monday said it believes Russia is turning to Iran to provide it with hundreds of unmanned aerial vehicles, including weapons-capable drones, for use in its ongoing invasion of Ukraine. U.S. National Security Advisor Jake Sullivan said it was unclear whether Iran had already provided any of the unmanned systems to Russia, but said the U.S. has information that indicates Iran is preparing to train Russian forces to use them as soon as this month. Our information indicates that the Iranian government is preparing to provide Russia with up to several hundred UAVs, including weapons-capable UAVs, on an expedited timeline, he told reporters on Monday. Sullivan said it was proof that Russia's overwhelming bombardments in Ukraine, which have led it to consolidate gains in the country's east in recent weeks, was coming at a cost to the sustainment of its own weapons. Sullivan's revelation comes on the eve of what has been Joe Biden's trip to Israel and Saudi Arabia, where Iran's nuclear program and malign activities in the region will be a key subject of discussion. Sullivan noted that Iran has provided similar unmanned aerial drones vehicles to Yemen's Houthi rebels to attack Saudi Arabia before a ceasefire was reached earlier this year. And of course, Iran, ancient Persia, unveiled these drone aircraft carriers that are loaded with drones that they are now flaunting to show that they have this capacity. In the Arab News, it said, Iran Navy unveils new fleet to carry drones. The U.S. and Israel previously accused Iran of using drones and missiles to attack U.S. forces and Israel-linked ships in the Gulf. The announcement comes as Biden 
has been on his first presidential visit to the Middle East. In Arab news, it says Iran's Navy on Friday unveiled a fleet of ships and submarines that Tehran said had the capability to carry armed drones. It says Iran began developing its drone program in the 1980s during the Iran-Iraq War. The U.S. imposed sanctions on the program in October of 2021 because Tehran was supplying the technology to its proxy militias in the region, including Hezbollah in Lebanon and the Houthis in Yemen. Friday's launch of the new drone fleet was accompanied by considerable fanfare on Iranian state TV. The first drone carrier division of the Iranian Navy, consisting of ships and submarine units carrying all types of drone for combat, detection, and destruction has been unveiled, military officials said. All types of the latest advanced drones produced by the military and the defense ministry have flown over the Indian Ocean's waters to demonstrate their capabilities. So this is what I see happening in Ezekiel 38, these formations of these drones coming in like a cloud. And they even say that the operations are on the cloud. <laughs> Um, with this technology. This company, Nutanix.com, says drones connect to cloud computing to analyze data from the sky. So they're going to come in like a cloud over the land of Israel. And the drones are connected to the cloud to analyze the data as the military actions are going on so they can maneuver the drones and so they can see what their targets are and how to you know use the weapons that they want to use drones connect to cloud computing to analyze data from the sky so the drones come in in the sky they ascend to cover like a cloud the cloud new product from sky drones from skydrones.com Ezekiel 38 says, And thou shalt come from thy place out of the uttermost parts of the north, thou and many peoples with thee, all of them riding upon horses, a great company and a mighty army. And thou shalt come up against my people Israel as a cloud to cover the land. It shall be in the end of days, and I will bring thee against my land, that the nations may know me, when I shall be sanctified through thee, O God, before their eyes. So he's going to destroy what I believe is not only the army on the land, but the swarms and fleets of drones coming like a cloud over the skies in the air like a cloud. And how is God going to handle this? How did he say he was going to manifest himself and he would be sanctified when they do this? Um, it says, And I will plead against him with pestilence and with blood, and I will cause to rain upon him and upon his bands and upon the many peoples that are with him an overflowing shower and great hailstones fire and brimstone. Thus will I magnify myself and sanctify myself, and I will make myself known in the eyes of many nations, and they shall know that I am the Lord. And I believe it's because many nations are going to watch on TV, on the news, this invasion. And when they cover the sky like a cloud, it's going to be with these drones. This is what God is revealing. Let me just read Ezekiel 38, verse 16. And thou shalt come up against my people Israel as a cloud to cover the land. And it shall be in the end of days. And I will bring thee against my land for the purpose of demonstrating who really is God and that God is in control of Israel. He mentions the army in the first part of the verse. It says all of them clothed most gorgeously, a great company with buckler and shield, all of them handling swords. The first country listed is Persia, which is Iran. Then Cush put with them, all of them with shield and helmet. 
Gomer with all his bands, and the house of Tagarma in the uttermost parts of the north, and all of his bands, even many peoples with thee. Be thou prepared, and prepare for thyself, thou and all thy company that are assembled unto thee, and be thou guarded of them. After many days thou shalt be mustered for service. In the latter years thou shalt come against the land that is brought back from the sword, that is gathered out of many peoples against the mountains of Israel, which have been a continual waste, but it is brought forth out of the peoples, and they dwell safely, all of them. And thou shalt ascend. And that means to rise up from the ground. There's another article from Forbes reports how Dubai is using laser drones to shock rainwater out of the sky. Now I have kind of a thought about how the fires have all been started um, over the past few years that have been like nothing we've ever seen before. And they always say that it was sparked by lightning when there is no lightning and there's been no thunderstorms. So something shot something out of the sky like laser. Defense1.com says, In a world first, Israel used a true drone swarm in combat during the conflict in May with Hamas in Gaza. Another article says, Israel's drone swarm over Gaza should worry everyone. And that's because it was like a test run of a drone swarm used in combat. It was a significant new benchmark in drone technology and it should be a wake-up call for the United States and its allies to mitigate the risk these weapons create for national defense and global stability. They hope they can develop this technology into something more fantastic in the future, I guess you'd say. The very fact that Persia is the first country mentioned is coming a Cross the land of Israel like a cloud covering the land is really extraordinary when they are the ones going to sell these drones to Russia and train their soldiers to use them. This is so astonishing in relation to Ezekiel 38. So we need to keep our eyes on this because I truly believe that those are drones in Ezekiel 38 that are coming in the latter days. I just wanted to add this. You may be wondering why some of the representatives from India were at the Middle East talks with Joe Biden, with Israel, and I believe it's because Israel sells Haifa port to India's Adani ports, Israel's Gadot, for 1.2 billion. So Israel has given control of one of their ports to China, who's going to be operating that port on their coastline, and now they're selling the Haifa port to India. Um, you know, Solomon had the phrase, trade follows the bride, so that's why he married all these foreign wives, so that he could trade and do intercommerce. Well, it doesn't really work well in the end. Um, you know, we'll see how it pans out in the end with the prophecy. And also this week there were 400 rabbis that warned President Biden against deadly agenda to divide Israel. And one of the things that Joe Biden did was that he removed the Israeli flag on his car, the Beast, for East Jerusalem meeting with the Palestinians. So I guess that tells you what he thinks deep down. And of course the speech was all about, you know, that he believes in dividing the land. Well anyway, this is something that's going to be happening in the near future because they're already selling the drones from Iran, ancient Persia, to Russia. And then all of these other countries are going to get involved with it that are on their side. So this is really a truly astounding revelation to realize what's entailed in Ezekiel 38. 
Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this installment. I'll talk to you later. And of course, these two were in the picture together that I was talking about. And of course, there's the bow with no arrow. And then right here, I want you to see these are the colors of the flag that his religion conquered by through the centuries. You've got the white, the green, the red, and the black of his pants, and the black swords of the throne chair, and the crown that was given to him. So you got all the colors of the flags that Islam conquered under in that picture. Last night when this took place, I went back to look for the video, and I just couldn't believe it. I watched what I had said and was just like, well, here it is. It's coming to pass right now. So something that the Holy Spirit revealed quite a while ago just came to pass. And I wanted to share this and show you what I had said in the video. It's extraordinary that this happened. You know, and thank God the Lord is always watching over his holy mountain and his holy land that belongs to him. And anybody that's trying to attack his land or his holy mountain or anything like that, they're really working against God. And they need to repent and get right with the Lord God of Israel. And lest they perish due to their evil deeds. So God is only going to let it go so far. And then he's going to show his power and might when he draws these people into his land to do their dirty deeds. And then God is going to act and show his might and power. And they're going to fall on the mountains of Israel. Because God does not enjoy wickedness and people that are terrorists on the earth. And people that think that vengeance is the way to go. So, of course, last night we were praying that nothing would strike the land of Israel. And they said something like 99.9% .9 of the missiles and drones and rockets that were flying into Israel were destroyed. And thank God the U.S. helped to destroy some of those things before they got there before they entered Israel and also Jordan was helping so the UK was also helping which is very interesting uh, regarding you know King Charles III being the king and all so anyway um, I just wanted to share this with you that this happened so we're all praying for the Lord's will to be done and for the Lord to come quickly and to turn people's hearts towards him before it's too late and this is really incredible. Um, Jesus Christ of Nazareth, Yeshua HaMashiach of Nazareth, is the King of Kings and Lord of Lords who redeemed us by paying the bride's price. And now we can go back into a Garden of Eden-like state and dwell with God forever as it was in the beginning. Now I was praying for God to protect everybody there and to watch over his holy mountain because I know his eye is always there and he's coming back to reign from that place and people need to have respect for holy Mount Moriah and keep everyone over there and here in your prayers God bless I'll see you in the next video